Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's panel, Inner versus Outer Beauty. My name is Brian Underwood, and I am the beauty director of Oh! The Oprah Magazine. I'm really excited to introduce you to the amazing group of professionals that we have on tap for this discussion. Uh, but first, I just want to take you through a few very, very brief housekeeping notes. Uh, first off, please follow us on social at Glam Hive and interact with us using the hashtag Glam Hive live. And secondly, we'd like to thank a give a big thank you to our presenting sponsor, Mary Kay, and the Mary Kay Global Design Studio. So thank you very much to them. And now, without further ado, I'd love to introduce you all to our panelists for today. First off is celebrity makeup artist, Patty Dubroff. Hi, Patty. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Next up is a celebrity hairstylist and groomer, Sheridan Ward, who's also the men's U.S. grooming editor at Glass Magazine. Hi, Sheridan, welcome. Hi. Next up, we have the fantastic Anton Cacciatorian, celebrity makeup artist. Hi there, Anton. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Excited to, to chat with you guys. And last but certainly not least is Kara yoshimoto a celebrity makeup artist and also a Chanel makeup artist. Hi, Kara. How are you? Hello. Great to be Great. here. Great. So let's kick things off, guys, uh, with the first <laughs> question. And Sheridan, let's, let's have you kick things off. What, why is the idea of inner beauty so important, do you think? And what does it mean, especially uh, today, with what's happening in the industry and in, in the world right now? Well, I definitely think that uh, discovering your, your inner gifts and your true beauty is really the only power you have uh, yeah. in this lifetime. So, and especially with now what's been happening, um, I think it's very apparent is you know, if not you, who? And if not now, when? Um, you know, it's really important to share your gifts with the world and love what you have. We're only going to be here once. Right. So uh, you might as well shine your brightest. And, uh, and what's amazing about inner beauty is that it's contagious. And uh, the minute you reveal those uh, inner gifts, it's amazing how much it inspires other people to also do the same. So shine, baby, shine. Right. Now, fo quick follow-up to that. Do you think uh, your role as a professional is changing in that way too? As in, is, is it more about striking a balance between bringing out someone's inner beauty rather than sort of transforming them into somebody totally different? Or is it sometimes about that, you know, an editorial work for, for, for instance? I think it's a bit of both, actually. Uh, yeah. Often I find that for hair and makeup, when we go on to shoots or with uh, actresses or models, especially actresses, um, it's about sometimes giving them something they haven't thought about, a different look or a different uh, style that they haven't tried or haven't thought about. And that often brings out a different characteristic yeah. uh, of their own beauty. And it helps them to really kind of think, oh, I never thought about that. I never thought about trying that. And I think that's a real wonderful, uh, the wonderful power that we have with hair and makeup is that we can really help kind of reveal uh, some hidden layers of beauty that may have been left uh, sleeping underneath. <laughs> Patty, how about you? Anything to add about the importance of sort of inner beauty and, and your role in sort of bringing that forward as a makeup artist? Um, well, the importance of inner beauty for me, it's like, it's, it's that thing that it's, it's not about, it's not about facial features, exterior, anything. Yeah. It's really like, for me, it's like, I, I just, the only way I can describe it is it's coming from someone's heart. It's coming from like their true essence and yeah. it's shining through. So, and that's what makes certain people so magnetic and and spectacular in their beauty. And again, it's not about a good cheekbone or a, you know, a, a full lip. <laughs> it's a light, um, really it's light. And, and then so far as for me to, I mean, I feel like when I go to do someone's makeup, my job is not to diminish that light. Yeah. To enhance that always and not I'm not one of those people to like, you know, erase someone and then paint them back on because, um, yeah, that can be fun for, you know, the sake of editorial or whatever. Um, but for me, it feels, it doesn't feel as, um, I don't know, authentic to what I'm attracted to, which is really just about like purely like 
enhancing them so that their light has a, a better frame to shine from. Right. Anton, you're, you're a guy, so I'm going to direct this little follow-up to you. Do yeah. you think there's a difference when you're working on, a, you know, a male client or a male celebrity in this idea of inner versus outer beauty? Are there intricacies there that are slightly different, do you think? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, and, and Sheridan might be able to actually speak to this even more than, than myself, because I don't do as much grooming, but I will say that kind of piggybacking off of what Patty said, which I love, it's about making that person's characteristics essentially stand out. You know, it's, yeah. it's, about, it's about adding to their shine and their personality. So I find that with, I find that with men, a lot of the time it's, it's, it's often more of like a, it's like a invisibility layer of like, make me look better than myself, but I can't look like anything is going on. Versus with right. our female clients, we have the opportunity to use um, makeup almost as like, almost like as an accessory. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Sharon, <laughs> do you agree with that? Uh, I do. And I uh, just what Anton was saying too, it's right about guys. They're probably a little less um, brave than female clients. Uh, but what I like about when you work with guys, is they, ju they just want to look like an elevated version of themselves. But then what's kind of amazing is when you work with them again, they're like, what did you put on me last time? Can I have a little <laughs> bit more? So men are, I feel like men are very curious. And, uh, and that's a really nice thing to see happening a lot. Of. Yeah, I love that. It's so true. And Cara, just to sort of circle back to you on this similar question, in your work, especially, you know, your work with a, a big global brand, any global brands that you've worked with, how does that, does that factor in? Does that play a role? Because I think on the one hand, you're, you're sort of bringing a brand message forward in some instances, but also trying to accomplish what we've been discussing. I would imagine that's striking a delicate balance at, at, at some times. Um, well... I think whoever I do work with um, right now, I've been working with Chanel for a very long time and some other brands, but um, it's important to me, no matter who you're working with, um, that for me, it's important just to have my own freedom and how I express myself um, when I'm doing my work. And hopefully that works for everybody else that I'm working with. Yeah. Um, and on, um, as far as inner beauty uh, with a big brand, um, I, I think that my feeling is that um, Chanel does know who I am and they do support you know, how I work and I feel a lot of freedom in being able to uh, kind of do what I do, which is uh, simply bring out people's um, best features and the lightness and working with skincare. And um, I have a, uh, a facial video that I, I show how to do facial gua sha and yeah. um, some other techniques that's going to be coming out that I'm excited about. And um, yeah, inner beauty is the most important thing when we're working is to first, for me, it helps me reset my energy and calibrate it with everybody else. Right. Um, you know, when I work with essential oils or I work with energy or massage, it's all about kind of centering our subject and then creating a space where we can all relax and kind of tune into each other and then for some reason that's when we get a flow going to be able to allow our creativity to come through with ease and flow so and that that prep is is really an important part of the process for you and and whoever you're working on yeah yeah because um without that if 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 the person we're working it's like um they're the center of the hive for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so if the queen or king is um, frantic, the rest of the hive is frantic. Um, and so I think part of all of our jobs and everyone, I loved what everyone else said, because it's, it's true. So much of our job is not about makeup, even though that's half of it. 
but without the other part of it, which is it, grounding and settling and uh, evening out and kind of getting everything in a good flow and making the person feel safe and good and um, ready to face the world. It's kind of a ritual thing that we do. Um, everyone has their own uni unique way of working with their client. Um, whether it's humor or, you know, I see a lot of skills happening with hair and makeup and styling that uh, we all use that we've honed for many years, you know, to how to work with people's psychologies um, because it's very nerve wracking going on camera. For sure, for sure. <laughs> On a red carpet, where or a red carpet, <laughs> and having to walk in those shoes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure work on the red carpet. There is this part of getting someone feeling beautiful, not only on the outside but absolutely on the inside, so they can exude that confidence, right? Uh, yeah, it's exactly what Kara said. You know, it's the same thing. It's like it's creating a good space, and and that's why I think it's interesting that. There are so many of us who are, you know, those people who are helping to prepare that the, the talent. Um, we all come with our different personality quirks or yep. you know, what we have to offer. So um, I know what I bring to the table is a, a sense of calm and um, a no bullshit kind of demeanor. And, you know, but there's other people that want a jokester in front of them. They want an yep. entertainer that's gonna help them you know, feel ready for what they're gonna do. So that's where the attraction between the talent and the artist and then the relationships build is because there's that, that uh, support system. Yeah, and do you, Patty, after, you know, working in the industry for a number of years, do you have a sort of sixth sense about what that person needs from you or do you just bring yourself fully and hope that it's a good fit? No, it's about reading the room. It's yeah. a skill. Yeah. You know, and it's a skill that maybe I didn't consciously know about when I started out, but I started to understand that this is, this is an important thing. Like yeah. you've got to, and you've got to read the room and read the person because if that person's having some intense thing, it's not the day to be chatty and ask, you know, questions and get chitty chatty. Right. You've got to go, okay, no, this is where we go today. You've got to read them. Yeah. Or else you're off on different planes. Right, right. I love how Kara put it that it's like, it's about, you know, creating a flow. And so part of that is, is understanding what the energy of the room needs. And then also what the energy of the whole rest of the day or the event or whatever, whatever, what that yeah. means. Right. So pivoting a little <clears throat> to our next question, Anton, let's start with you on this. You yeah. know, I think the beauty industry talks a lot about inclusivity, and I know as a beauty editor, it's something that I think about a lot in framing our coverage at O. What group do you think uh, is, is still most excluded from the beauty industry? I mean, a, a lot of groups, I think. I, I definitely think that we've come a long way Mm -hmm. As far as seeing all different, you know, all different ages, all different sexes, all different races, you know, we, we've come a long way in seeing that more and more. But I, I still feel like we have a long way to go. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad I think that you brought up age because I agree. I think that that is that is a demographic that still needs addressing. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I, you know. I, I'm Armenian and, and growing up that way, watching TV or looking at ads or, you know, stealing my sister's Vogue, <laughs> I didn't necessarily see myself in any of the pages when I was flipping through. Yeah. So, but, but more and more I, I'm seeing it. And, and I think it's such a beautiful thing because no one should be excluded just because they don't fit into some ideal of some sort. But I also still think that they're, are a ton of demographics we're not seeing. Like I would love to see more Eastern Indian women in beauty ads or Native American women. You know, mm -hmm. I, I still think that, um, you know, you don't have to have like the most flawless skin in the world to be beautiful. You could still, I, I just think that there's so many different, there's so many d different things that we could still explore. Like we're seeing a lot of, um, like you, we are seeing a lot more mature women in ads, which I love. Like. Um, 
what's her name, like Mae Musk, for example, you know, she's yeah. a cover girl and she's in her 70s. And I mean, she's as stunning as that. It's just so, so rad that we're finally seeing more of that. Right, I loved seeing that septuagenarian model in the latest Gucci makeup campaign. Yes, I that, that, that was so, so, so cool. I, I, I just it. thought that was <laughs> unbelievable. I just think that everyone should be able to find themselves yeah. in the pages of a magazine or in a commercial on TV or, you know, on a show or in a movie, anything. Right. Sheridan, how about you? What do you, what do you think about that question? Who, who is still excluded from the beauty industry? Exactly what Anton said. <laughs> no, I'm sure no, but seriously. Not <laughs> concluded. Just what, just what Anton said. Um, no, but no, I totally agree. I do think that the um, uh, older uh, models and actresses aren't really publicised as much as they as they should be. Yeah. But also, especially the LGBTQ uh, uh, industry and trans. I feel like a lot of yeah. the trans models, uh, like I said, it's. Uh, what Anton was saying is absolutely right. It's kind of sneaking its way into the industry, especially more so recently, thanks to shows like RuPaul's Drag Race and Pose. It's yeah. really kind of brought everyone out and it's like, you know what, we're all here and we're all beautiful and we can all look beautiful in every different way, depending on who we are. And it's, you know, it's, it's all just skin, it's all just makeup and the world is a wonderful, colorful place. And I think it's important to show that with with the diversity of advertising um and for me i'd love to see kind of more sort of trans and lgbtq focused uh, ad uh, advertising because yeah. we're here and we've got a lot of money and willing to spend it right and makeup i think has become a, a man's game now too i think you go on social media and you see a lot of men right now experimenting with makeup um in all different ways not just to sort of look like themselves but having fun with color cara are you seeing and sensing that as well um i have i'm terrible with names and when put on the spot i get even worse but there's a few people that i've worked with the females on um on the these press tours and and the men were playing with fashion and makeup expression yeah um I can't think of the names right now. <laughs> I will never forget a face. <laughs> and Patty, I saw you nodding when we were discussing age, especially in, in the industry. Do you agree that still more work needs to be done there specifically? Yeah, and um, yeah, and I, I think when it comes to um, age and, and skin texture, that's what I wanted to talk about, texture. So, you know, I'm, I'm 52 and I don't, I choose not to do uh, fillers or Botox or any of that. Mm -hmm. So I have texture and yeah. I wish, and sometimes I see it, but I wish to see more examples of women that have, like me, cho chosen to age in a way that's natural, but still healthy and, you yeah. know, and keeping vibrancy. So. Um, that's important. And then again, speaking to texture, like then when I go down to like my teenage daughter and thinking about, you know, that, that, the, you know, and, and I had the same thing and I think everyone has the same thing that we feel like this pressure to have perfect skin and not a pimple and blah, 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 because everything we see has been airbrushed to perfection. Right. I think that if people saw more realistic versions of skin textures, pores, pimples, lines, whatever, it would it wouldn't make people feel like they need to go out and um, uh, change themselves so drastically, or to yeah. even do it in their phone apps. You right. know, Absolutely. yeah. So you know, Patty sort of kicked this next question off a little bit, but it's really about what sort of action steps we all think that the industry needs to take now to sort of be a more inclusive place. I think representation, different skin textures, as Patty was mentioning, is absolutely one thing. Cara, any thoughts on your end about specific action steps that you'd like to see? Um, well, I mean, one thing is, I just wanted to add that I have worked with a few young um, actresses that are really beautiful and sometimes don't have 
perfect skin who want to keep their blemishes and their under eye circles, which is very, very refreshing. I love it. And um, I think that like even us as um, on our Instagrams and things like that, I know Patty, you're very big into not doing any retouching. And I think that like recently I've really, really, I was very hesitant to use any of that in the past. And then everybody was using it and I felt pressured that I was supposed to use it. And then I recently decided I don't want to do it anymore. And so I haven't been using any retouching at all. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I love the idea, Patty, and, and of, of, you know, like I have a ton of moles. I don't cover them. Yeah. You know, um, my daughter, you know, she does not have perfect skin and, she's fine leaving it and going out and doing the rest of her and it's fine you know um i think if we we do see more magazine covers with um women of age that are gorgeous i mean you go to like paris let's say and you see all these women and you know if these women are older and men well men always have it easier because they're fine with wrinkles, but you see all these women who are dressed so beautifully, chicly, they're natural, but gorgeous. And I feel like if we saw beautiful photographs with beautiful light and shape and graphic and, and fashion with women with beautiful unbotoxed face, I don't do any Botox either. I'm, I'll be uh, 49 this year. Um, and, you know, I want to, age gracefully i have grays coming in you know and <laughs> i want to feel like i can age gracefully too um and um yeah i just think if we see more of it um in beautiful versions of it yeah um, of, of age and race and people of all different like skin discoloration like the one model that has the skin discoloration yeah. that's a beginning i mean obviously hers is like artfully <laughs> she's like a nasty artfully Wait, uh, Winnie Harlow you're talking about yeah. Winnie Harlow yeah um yeah but um yes so yeah I, I think, think it's happening but we can also do more of it it's really interesting that you both brought that up because I do think and I sense that there is uh, a sort of shift toward that by big brands, big retailers calling out when retouching is used, when it's not used. So it does seem that the pendulum is a bit shifting that way. Sheridan, any other thoughts about other action steps that you know we, the industry might be able to take as a whole? Well, I just want Patty to know that I've never had a spot in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And I love looking flawless at all times. Flawless from birth. <laughs> <laughs> filter, filter, filter. No, kidding, kidding. Um, but no, I think it is, I, I think it is uh, really important for people to use their, you know, we have these thumbs for a reason and we have Twitter and Instagram for a reason. And, you know, if we've realized anything from the Black Lives Matter and also everything during the pandemic and the whole political thing, which I'm not going to go into, um, that our thumbs count. So you want to see more of something, then you get on Twitter, you go on Instagram and you blow these companies up, not literally, uh, but with messages and we want to see this, people like me, and just keep doing it because it is a, a numbers game and we do have power in numbers. So you want to see something you're not seeing, get those thumbs to work. Anton, do you agree that those thumbs are the key? Yeah, I mean, it, oh. it's, it's interesting. <laughs> and, 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 and like, like Sheridan said, not, not, not getting into that whole situation, but with the civil rights movement that we're seeing, I, I mean, it's, it's because people are, people are speaking up and they're saying something. And I think, that, um, I think that actually a lot of brands, a lot of makeup brands have, not specifically because of the current um, civil climate, but because of um, people demanding that their color ranges be extended, people mm -hmm. demanding, like, I, I don't see myself in this range. Where am I? Like, why don't I have a foundation here? Why don't I have a concealer here? And brands going further out of their way to, to extend and to accommodate everyone and to have those different undertones and all those different things. There are certainly a lot of brands who can stand to catch up in that regard, but 
I think we're seeing that a lot more and it's because there's a demand. It's because people are, yeah. you know. Right. Yeah, there's I mean, that access now. Thumbs, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, even somebody commented because I did this post with a friend of mine who looks really young and she does really have perfect skin. But, um, you know, like somebody commented on my feed, um, you know, this girl's like 13 years old. <laughs> you know what? show me something that I can use. And I said, yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> it was my daughter just came home. Um, so yeah. So, and I heard that. I said, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> right. Do, do I'll you, do one next time. <laughs> you know, Cara, I'll, I'll start with you. Do you as a professional, uh, you know, I think consumers absolutely have, you know, direct access to brands now for sure. Do you as a professional think it's incumbent upon you to sort of bring those concerns forward too as an, as an artist representing, you know, the community and, and people and consumers? I think that we have a voice because we are working with the people, working with the people that yeah. are making the decisions. Yeah. Um, it's not always an easy uh, flow to whoever the, the, the top person is who's in charge of the, the, um, the visuals for a company, the aesthetics. Yeah. Um, but for sure, I think for sure that we can start um doing more on our own feeds and that's a really good point and something that i just thought about because of this comment <laughs> and i just have a little more time to think <laughs> right now um because <laughs> there's more time but uh it's going faster it seems like even though so um but it, work is starting to come in now i mean yeah. it probably sh it might close down again i don't right. know I don't know what you all your feelings are on that. Like I just have some things coming in this week, but then I hear um, the rules are changing. Anyways, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah, that, that would probably be a whole other two two hour panel. Exactly. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Let's <laughs> talk about other things. Patty, do you do you agree with Cara yeah. that there is sort of an innate responsibility? Um, you know, incumbent upon you as artists to sort of talk about these things with brands as well? I think when you have the position that you're working with a brand, then then it's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, I think that the people who actually have the, the loudest uh, platform within a brand structure are the artists who are working at the counters <laughs> yeah. or the artists that are representing the brands out in the yeah. fields because they're the ones who are saying, you know, can go back and say to their field managers or whatever, they're, you know, that, you know, our community, you know, within our community, these people don't feel like they're being uh, uh, paid attention to. And hopefully that's what will go back to the brand, you know, in, in, and make changes, hopefully. But I right. feel like they, they have a lot of power there because they know who's buying and who need, who's wanting things. Um, for us as celebrity artists, when you're in that incredible position to be brought in to like help with um, development, yeah, those conversations definitely can be had. But but I don't feel comfortable just like you know shouting out to some random brand like, hey, you da da da. Like I'm like not my time, right. not my place. If you ask, I'll be honest. Yeah. Right. So. Shifting a little bit, uh, Anton, why don't you sort of kick this one off? How, this sure. is a fun one. How do you think people use hair and makeup to express themselves? Well, I think it's definitely, uh, like, I, I think we were kind of talking about this earlier. Like, it's a way to just kind of accessorize, yeah. you know? And I think that it, it it's it's a representation of characteristics if that makes sense, it's kind of it's kind of taking that, it's kind of taking that um, the personality of your inner beauty and turning it into like an outer beauty kind of characteristic. Like, you know, growing up, uh, my mom and my sister always wore red lipstick, always, and yeah. it takes a certain kind of confidence to carry that. You know, if, like a a fierce creature is going to get up and put on a a red lipstick every day, and they're they're both fiery women. You know, love them so. <laughs> You know, it was definitely an extension of their personalities, 100%. Yeah. And I think that, um, 
you know, especially us as celebrity artists working with, with, with different actors and actresses, um, you know, a lot of them like to do a certain kind of look all the time, but then a lot of them like to experiment. And they're like, oh, let's do this fun color today. Oh, let's do this really cool lip, or oh, I want to try this this eyeliner technique. And that's all coming from, that's not, in my opinion, coming from a, oh, I want to do that because I'll look pretty. You know, it's coming from a place of, oh, I want to do that because it's because it's fabulous and because yeah. it's an extension of who I am. And it's, it's a way for me to accessorize, you yeah. know? Right. Patty, uh, how about, what is that sort of relationship between, you know, a client's expression of themselves and, and what they may want to do and, and your sort of work as an artist? Is it a sort of fun little banter that you can get into with some of your clients about this idea of expression through makeup? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the bottom line for me as an artist is I'm not there to put like my stamp on someone. I'm there to make sure that they're walking out the door feeling like the most confident version of themselves. Yeah. Whatever that is for that day, whether yeah. that day they're like, I don't, I can't be bothered. I don't really want much today. Great. Let's do that because that's what you need to do your job. Um, I'm not there to like put a stamp on like makeup by Patty Dubroff. Patty Dubroff look. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm there to make sure that I'm, I'm helping to support them in the way that is going to help them shine the greatest. Yeah. Cara, do you agree with, with that idea? What are, what are your thoughts? I absolutely agree. Although, Patty, you do kind of have a stamp <laughs> and not everyone looks beautiful. <laughs> um, and, and naturally, you do do that. You do bring people out um, and they're, they're natural. And you can tell that you're working with um, the person and what their mood is that day. And, and absolutely, I agree. You, you know, you, you, you do have like a little banter about what are you feeling? Sometimes they're like, I don't want to be sitting in this chair today or, or, you know, Oh, let's experiment. Do you have some ideas? And then you show them some things and, and they want to try new things. They're feeling um, adventurous. And, you know, some people they'll just be like, well, I would never do this, but I trust it. If, you do it i know you're going to do a good version mm -hmm. of it like right. and, and that's fun when you have that kind of trust relationship with our, our, our clients um, and then you can start experimenting a little bit and going outside of the box where they might feel scared to do something different you know sheridan how are how are guys you know your clients and and just men in general that you see and notice expressing themselves through sort of their grooming habits and, and routines well, actually, number one, I really want to get my hands on one of those patty stamps. <laughs> when those are sold, Same. I want to order in bulk, just so you know, patty yeah. stamp. Um, but yeah, basically, I feel like with guys, they're just getting a lot better. I find that when I'm walking into a job now with, with male clients, <laughs> often they're already pretty much done. So mm. I'm just like, great, because they're so on, you know, they know the products, they know what's kind of, what's trending, what's looking good. Men are so curious and excited. Right. Um, so I'm finding that the men generally are kind of rocking up, especially the ones I work with, and just look fantastic already. So I don't really need to do uh, do a lot. Um, but I feel like where where they like to experiment is particularly with kind of being back to what Pat was saying earlier, different textures. So I've worked with, you know, if you're working on a shoot with someone, not necessarily red carpet because you want to keep it more sort of chic and simple, but on a shoot. Like, for example, I did one recently and we made it a shine. So we did shine on his body for like one shot. Then we did like shine on the cheekbones for another. Then we did like a full kind of wet look. And then the last one was kind of all matte. And then all the shine was just on those kind of main bullet points. Almost like the way you do female beauty, but obviously on a guy. And it just looked incredible. So the kind of shine kept moving depending on his energy, his vibe with the different looks. And that was really fun. So something as subtle as shine can be used it's extremely uh, a powerful editorial tool right. for looks like i said not so much with um red carpet you want to keep it a little more simple but for editorial, especially with guys it was really fun to play with uh, the textures and shine is a is a winner is sh shine for the win <laughs> i think it's, for the win. <laughs> i think it's <laughs> <laughs> thanks patty I 
I think it's a good segue <laughs> to, you know, this last question and Sheridan, I'll have you sort of kick it off and elaborate on what you were just talking about. Do you think that self-expression and experimentation, as you just said, and, and this can relate to your work on men for sure, do you think that's changing the way we think of beauty, especially for, for in your case, you know, for men, just this idea that men can have fun with beauty, can be a part of the beauty conversation. Is it shifting, you know, based on that sort of idea of self-expression and experimentation? Like I said, I think I'm seeing it a lot more with um, editorial stuff, and especially with, uh, younger actors that are kind of coming in that are, are generally kind of a little more fluid yeah. with their sexuality or just much more open. Um, you know, old Hollywood was, you're a man and you're straight, and even if you're not, you're straight because it's your fans. And I feel like the industry's changing so much now that it's, it's, we don't want that. We want reality. And it doesn't matter what, which way you, your sexuality is. We want to see, we want to see you because of who you are and the talents you have in front of the camera. It's kind of irrelevant of your private life. And actually it's kind of, it's welcomed with, we want to see diversity. And I think, especially with uh, newer actors, they're a lot more open to just being more flamboyant with their styling. And, uh, and also being braver with, with hair and with trying looks out. And I think that's something that we should all be encouraging. Um, and it's what we need. The world is diverse. So it's good to really show off uh, what we all have to offer. Patty, do you think that individual self-expression is kind of reshaping the way we think of beauty? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see it, uh, I see it a lot with my daughter's generation, you know, the yeah. teenagers and that they are, they have this confidence that um, I'm really inspired by. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think that, and, and again, and then on the other side of it, there, you know, the, the confidence to be like, okay, this is who I am. Yeah. Make, make it look a little better, great, but this is who I am. I think I, I'm seeing people really standing into that and not feeling like they need to be so homogenized. Yeah. Um, sadly, there is the homogenized, homogenized vibe that happens in social media a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that this time in our lives is um, pulling us even more further away from that. Yeah. And, um, and, and people getting more real, just yeah. keeping it real. And that's, I think that's what inner beauty is, is keeping it real. Like right. whatever real is for you, it can be full of artifice. Yeah. But if that's who you real the spirit of who you are, yeah. great. But like what's real for you? Anton, I think Patty brings up a really good point, which is that how do you distinguish, you know, self-expression um, and inspiration from just sort of adopting, like being a copycat or adopting this like sort of very homogenized look when there's so much out there to sort of you know, be inspired by? What's, what's that fine line between inspiration and kind of, you know, getting lost? Oh, that's, a, that's a really good question. But I think that ultimately, I, I think that speaks a lot to trend and the things that we're kind of expected to maybe follow. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like uh, us as artists, like we'll look to trend for inspiration, but I think that all of us can probably safely say that, if it makes you feel good, do it. You know, yeah. you don't have to necessarily, you know, if you want to wear lip gloss in the winter or, you know, a dark lip in the dead of summer, then do it. Like, if it makes you feel great, like, why shouldn't you? Not. So I think that, um, I think it speaks a lot to inspiration in the sense that um, it's all about how it makes you feel. Like Sharon and Patty were both saying, um, and Patty, I love what you said about clients feeling an A-plus feeling like an A plus version of themselves because ultimately, yes, you know, we're makeup artists and um, hairstylists, but it's all about how that person feels. It's not about how they look. Right. Obviously how they look is part of the equation, but they can look amazing and feel like, you know, just not have any confidence in that moment. And then it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. But yeah. if they leave that room feeling like, the most confident that's the gift is when you know when a client looks at me and says oh my god I feel amazing you yeah. know they didn't say that they look amazing they said that they feel amazing which I think right. is even more important so I really I'm really not sure if there's a fine line between 
necessarily like a, like a copycat thing or an inspiration thing, as long as it makes you feel great because yeah. so many things are, you know, duplicated and recreated and recycled right. over and over and over. I mean, when we see trend from like decades ago and a hundred years ago and two years ago, it's just, right. all, it's all part of the, the game, cycle, the beauty <laughs> cycle, really. Cara, do you, do you agree with that? Do you have any, anything to add? There? Everything's been done. <laughs> yeah, everything's been done. I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, I I love I love what you guys are talking about. I think it's, um, there is it is all about how how it feels, and I love Anton what you said about like it feels so much. It makes me so happy when someone says I feel amazing because that's what we're really there for, and that's, that's what the, that's like the real gift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what a great note to, to end on because it looks like we're just uh, about out of time. So thank you guys all so much for lending your insights uh, to this panel and, and giving us of your time. And we really appreciate it. And thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Yay. Thanks. thanks. Thank you.